Hello and welcome to Hacking the Exile, the show that will give you all the background information you need to truly appreciate the Exile 60 webisodes. Today I have brought my colleague and uh, uh, co-star Ulf Pettersson. Welcome to the show. Thank you, I'm happy to be here. Well, uh, you are the newest cast member of, of the cast. How does it feel to come into the episode, well, to do the series like just for the second season? You haven't been there from the start. What were you bringing to the table? Um, it feels very good, of course. I mean, you know, I, I uh, have gotten to see some of it beforehand. Um, and uh, being there with Amelia and you guys is, is awesome. Okay, so only positive things. Um, because, you know, if we want to get the juicy stuff, we should also discuss what are the downsides of being followed by a camera during work hours? Um, well, I guess I'm not yet that comfortable being in front of the camera. I guess that's, that's a downside, perhaps. So, right now, when you have three or four cameras in, around you, that makes you feel a bit uncomfortable, or is it...? Yeah, I, I guess I'm not really used to this, yeah. Well, I'm certain you will be with time. Um, that's the upside of being followed by cameras, I suppose. But uh, let's go to the series. Uh, we've been discussing how to script the series, and uh, you've been involved in that. Yeah, Can right. you talk a little bit about that? Um, well, we've, we've discussed uh, what should uh, be in the series and what the focus would be, um, whether it should be sort of a, a lighter mood to it or a, a bit more serious, um, and uh, how many episodes we should have. And we ended up with uh, serious content presented in, in a lighter mood. Yes, um, yes, we did. Yeah. And hopefully that will work. If, yeah. if the viewers have any comments on how we should script the film, you're always uh, welcome to put them in comments uh, underneath this uh, episode. Or you can also send them to anyone in the office and we will um, make sure that we read it and consider it. Uh, your role is uh, portrayed as the expert. Uh, was that your own choice or was it sort of a forced upon you? Um, it was Tess who chose the title for that. Um, and Tess is our communicator who yes. uh, edits the, and produces the films. Yeah. Uh, and you're happy with the title? Uh, I'm happy with it, but of course, you know, the true expert at our office is Amelia. So. Well, uh, I think most of the viewers that have seen the show will have noticed that by now. But uh, yeah. anyways, what is your background? How did you end up in the Exile 6E webisode? Um, I have, I guess, academic training in political science and economics, and uh, I focused a bit on copyright for my thesis. Um, so and then the Pirate Party were close at hand. Yes, certainly. And uh, you're working with international trade, mm -hmm. uh, and we saw you in one of the live streaming discussing current trade negotiations between mm -hmm. the European Union and other countries. Yeah. Uh, could you just give a brief summary of which dossiers you're following at the moment? Um, at the moment, we're very busy with the collective rights management dossier, um, which concerns um, the collective management of uh, copyright uh, in the EU. Okay, so this is an internal EU dossier? Yes. But is it still in the International Trade Committee or...? It's in uh, both of Amelia's committees, both oh. in INTA and in ITRE. How, how come, uh, for those that don't know how the committees work, why is the Committee of International Trade involved in uh, uh, law re regulation that is only concerning the EU? Yeah, we were a bit surprised about that as well when we first heard that they would be involved in that. Uh, but I guess it does, to some extent, um, uh, concern uh, perhaps uh, collective rights management uh, organizations that are from overseas. And it might also concern like imports and exports. Oh, okay. So that's why they want to be involved. So this is something we will regulate in future trade agreements? Um, collective rights management have not really been regulated in trade agreements. It's been mentioned in a couple of trade agreements, but only like uh, in the broadest of terms. So what will this legislation mean for Europe? Um, this legislation will mean that uh, there will be oversight uh, and more transparency of the uh, collective rights management organizations. This and sounds like a good thing. Yes, it okay. is, basically. And also there will be a new system for managing uh, multi-territorial licensing so that you can enable, hopefully, um, the same kind of or a similar online music market as to that you have in the U.S. Okay, to simplify cross-border licensing. Yes. 
that will never work. Uh, yeah, it hasn't worked so far. Um, but you're hopeful it will. I think that this uh, legislation will lead to improvements. But you know, it's very difficult. It's a complex system, so it's difficult to foresee actually what the effects will be. You know, you actually sound like a politician saying that. What does it really mean? You cannot foresee the consequences. It might lead to improvements. Uh, will we have cross-border licensing that works? Um, and if not, who should we blame? Who we should blame? Well, I think someone we should blame are um, the collective rights management organizations that really, you know, they favor themselves and not uh, consumers or users of copyrights. Um, and they are very influential also with the politicians, so politicians have listened to them. Um. And, and if, if one of our viewers would want to involve themselves in this uh, regulation, how can they do that? Who should they turn to? Should they contact the, the uh, collecting rights management organizations? Should they contact us? Should they contact the parliament, other parliamentarians? They should contact the parliamentarians. Mm -hmm. um, they could contact also uh, the commission. Um, and they could, uh, you know, try to create an interest around this in their member states. Okay. So that the so on the national level. Yeah, yeah. Because this is co-legislation, so the council will have an equal say with the parliament. Yes, that's right. Yeah. But let's move back to uh, trade agreements. Mm -hmm. uh, we're currently monitoring um, CETA, I suppose. Yes. And the future trade agreement with the U.S. Uh huh. Yes. Uh, which else are? What other trade agreements are on the table? Oh, there's a lot of them. Uh, there are trade agreements with uh, Japan, with uh, Moldova, with Georgia, with Armenia, with Azerbaijan, with uh, uh, a couple of Latin American countries, uh, with lots of like North African countries, uh, and Singapore, are they uh, all India. E are they all equally important or would you? Uh, no, of course the biggie is uh, the TTIP, the Transatlantic Trade and Investment Partnership, which is between the EU and the US. That's a real big deal. And how's that going? Um, it's just starting out, um, and uh, I guess they will start negotiations in a couple of months, early June. So. so basically what we're discussing now is which mandate the Commission should have for the negotiations. Yes, that's right. Yeah. Uh, and that has not been established? It has not, as of yet, no. Uh, um, but they could get a mandate, for example, to negotiate intellectual property rights and enforcement of intellectual property rights. Yes, uh, we're trying to keep that out. And uh, has of that course. Um, the Green Group is going, you know, have tabled amendments mm -hmm. to keep intellectual property rights out of the mandate. Um, but in the draft proposal, they're in? Uh, there's no draft proposal as oh, of yet. Oh, we haven't had that um, yet. But there is uh, a resolution coming up okay. discussing this in, in INTA. And when will that be decided? Um, in a couple of weeks, I think. Okay. It so people that were concerned about ACTA might want to get, uh, you know, a bit of start paying some attention to this to see where it leads. Yes, certainly, yes. And once again, if they want to involve themselves, where, who do they contact? Uh, they contact uh, the members of parliament, um, mm -hmm. and uh, especially those that are, uh, I guess, relevant to this. So that would be those in the International Trade Committee. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe not us, because I think we will end up on the right side on this anyways, but uh, the others. Yeah, yeah. And uh, what about civil society? Do we have any watchdogs following this on the outside? And do we have any contact with them? I mean, um, I haven't had that much really, but I'm sure there are many that do. Um, I remember with the yeah. whole ACTA debate, there were a lot of American yeah. organizations that got worried. They blocked, they blanked out their web pages and so on. Okay. Uh, no, that was previous, but. Uh, a lot of the American uh, organizations that were involved in uh, uh, the legislation regarding CISPA in the U.S. Uh, were involved in, in discussions regarding ACTA. Do you, do you think we can see uh, some activities on the other side of the Atlantic on this one? I'm sure we will, uh, you know, but uh, with these things, this is expected to take many, many years. Mm -hmm. And uh, I guess it takes some, you know, there's some startup time before yeah. these get going and realize that it's actually happening. So what we need is to build the civil society network that can follow and monitoring this uh, outside of the parliament as well as we are working with it inside of the parliament. Yes, yes, of course. And if anyone of the viewers want to do just that, what would be your first advice? Being um, the expert on the topic. 
I'm not sure if I am, but uh, my first advice would be to inform yourself and especially inform yourself about the procedure, you know, mm -hmm. who's doing what and what's happening when. That seems to be the tricky part in, in these kind of negotiations. Yes, it can be. Um, I mean, they are far from transparent. Mm -hmm. Why so, is that? I mean, the parliament prides itself to be transparent, but when it comes to these negotiations, how come it's not? Well, I mean, the true reason for it is that they know that a lot of this stuff is controversial, so they don't want to release it. If they do, uh, they will have protests and political difficulties, people won't get re-elected, etc. Uh, so they don't want that. You know, I mean, this is a way for them to try to decide and implement things that mighty politicians want, but that, you know, the population doesn't want. Sneaking it under the table into a trade agreement yes. instead of regular legislation. Yes. That sounds a bit creepy. It is. It's very creepy. And uh, that's why people should pay a lot more attention to this um, mm -hmm. than they do. Um, so do we have any um, plans to get people to pay attention in our office? Will there be a webisode about the sneaky trade agreement deals? There should be. Yeah, a very good idea. You certainly should. Uh, so perhaps since you're involved in the scripting, I can get a promise that there will be a Shady Deal episode. Yeah, that's a promise. Excellent. We're, we're looking forward to see it. Are there any other episodes in the pipeline that you want to uh, you know, give the viewers a sneak peek of what's coming? Um, I guess we have some events that we've been doing that mm -hmm. we will have webisodes about, like the EID event. And, the and EID is electric identification, which is uh, yes. legislation regulating uh, electronic identification uh, in all member states, trying to harmonize that, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And there's an episode about Amelia's recent trips to Stockholm. What was she doing in Stockholm? Um, she was visiting uh, various authorities, like the, the Foreign Office and I think the Competition Authority mm -hmm. and, and others. Yeah. And other episodes? Um, she recently uh, made a kind of nice speech uh, at the, the Young Pirates annual mm -hmm. conference, I guess, and we would like to feature that. That would be nice. Yeah. Uh, the Young Pirates annual conference were held uh, some week ago in uh, in Uppsala, yes, uh, in Sweden. Yes. Yeah. And right now she's in Oxford. Mm -hmm. uh, m that might be come up in some episode, perhaps? Yeah, if we get some footage, that would be great. Yeah. So if you ever see Amelia on town, take your camera and film her, send it to us. We might include that in a future webisode. Yes. <laughs> Excellent. Uh, do it in the nice way, not in the creepy way, because, you know, that's just creepy. Uh, <laughs> but, um, well, uh, we're looking forward to see all these episodes. I would like to thank you for, for joining me today. Thank you so uh, much for having me. Well, it's my pleasure. We will be back in, uh, well, we will be back in two weeks and hopefully I will manage to drag uh, the party leader of the Swedish Pirate Party, Anna Thuberg, to this uh, interview uh, in two weeks. See you then and thank you for coming. <laughs>